Meta invented a damn time machine. The most advanced piece of personal technology. Probably going to be the next major platform after phones. Truly one of the most magical experiences I've had with a piece of new technology. This might be the best look into the future of tech. Welcome back to ReReview, where we watch all the reviews so you don't have to. Today, we're diving deep into Meta Orion AR glasses, Meta's ambitious prototype pointing towards the future of augmented reality. Is this the device that we will finally replace our smartphones? Let's hear from the people who've actually tried it. First piece of tech I've seen in so long, where I tried it, I stepped out of the demo, and the only thing I could say was, holy sh**. It's a kind of device that they call a time machine. And we're one of the few people at this year's Connect conference to go hands-on with one. Up top, I want to be clear. Orion was supposed to be a product you could buy, but it's not. Instead, it's a peek at what Meta has coming for hardware it's releasing over the next few years. I got to demo them a little bit earlier today. <gasps> oh, I heard someone on your team call these the real-life Tony Stark glasses. This is the culmination of 10 years of research and, and development that we've done to basically miniaturize all the computing that you need to have glasses, not a headset, but glasses that can put full holograms into the world with a wide field of views. And you're looking at videos and you're doing video calls and it's spectacular. It's just spectacular. Just you feel like it's a sense of, of real wonder. The enthusiasm is undeniable. Many are comparing it to magic or something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but it's not magic. It's cutting edge engineering. Let's break down the core components that make up this time machine. It's taken them years and countless millions in R&D to get to this point. A 98 gram pair of glasses with an optical display system that can put holograms almost everywhere your eyes can look and an input system that seemingly reads your mind. The display isn't made of glass. It's made of silicone carbide, which delivers an unprecedented 70 degree field of view. That means meta engineers figured out how to bend light beams in ways it does not like the bend. You have two little projectors in silicon carbide lenses. And what that means is that those projectors can display an image over the top of the real world. The frames are made of magnesium, just like an F1 car, because it's light and radiates away heat. I mean, you can't just put a fan in glasses. Orion cools itself by glowing. It uses the same materials NASA uses to cool satellites in space. And they're actually a three-part system. It is the glasses that you wear on your face, and there's also a wireless computer puck that must be within about 15 feet of the glasses at all times. And there's also a wrist strap that's measuring electrical impulses through your arm, and that's used as an input device. The main gestures it recognizes are pinching your index finger with your thumb to select, pinching your middle finger and thumb to invoke the main menu, and swiping up or down with your thumb against your closed palm to scroll. There's haptic feedback on the band to let you know when it recognizes a gesture, which is a helpful signal that made me quickly comfortable with using it. So a lightweight frame, revolutionary display technology, and a haptic feedback system. It sounds almost too good to be true. But how do all of these impressive features translate into actually using the Orion? The team came in and the team is very nervous to show this to me because it's been obviously five years and who knows how much money in the making. And we are, uh, so they're, they're just apologizing for everything. They're just, oh, you know, I know that that, that pixel is a little rough and, and we'll get the color uniformity right. Meanwhile, I'm having one of the greatest experiences of my professional career. What was it about? It's, it's a fully functioning system. You could use it. You can walk around. You can spend, you know, it's got a two hour battery life. You're walking, mm -hmm. you can spend time in meetings. You're, you're able to have a really rich um, computer available to you without taking anything out of your, of, of your pocket, without losing the context of where you are in the world, without breaking eye contact with someone that you're talking to. So I was able to jump on like a WhatsApp call, I was able to scroll Instagram. First and foremost, the displays are really good. But there's a lot of individual pieces layered on top of that. The tracking is really quite solid. So much like if you've ever used a MetaQuest or an Apple Vision, you can put a window and it will stay there in space. On top of that, you can take advantage of looking around and tapping to actually navigate versus something on the Quest today where you actually have to either use the controllers or use your hand. So you also have Meta AI built in. So one of the demos I got to try was that there was a list of ingredients and I could look at it and just tell me like, hey, give me a, a recipe. And not only did it take a look at everything and sort of create a recipe, but actually had little tags floating over each item. It's a little bit transparent. So like if I was talking to someone and I had a window over their face, I couldn't really see it too much. The fact that it felt like there was no compromise. I was just wearing a regular pair of glasses. They just happened to let me walk around and be like, scroll on Instagram by myself. Like that. The quality of the graphics isn't at the level that I'd want to watch a movie in the glasses, but I had no problem reading text on a web page that was several feet away. 
at one point I had multiple windows open to the side while sitting across from someone at a table and an incoming video call then pushed one of the windows directly over the person I was sitting across. And at that point, it felt like the glasses weren't augmenting reality, but breaking it. So now seeing that, you might believe that uh, the cameras and the sensors on the front of the glasses are picking up, you know, my hand doing this gesture and then doing the scroll in sync with it. There is hand tracking, but it's not for that. This gesture would be picked up anywhere if it was in my sweatshirt pocket behind my back because I'm wearing that wristband. And this thing may be the coolest input device, the coolest piece of tech I've tried in a long time. Do you like using hand tracking at all with this or do you mostly just do the band? It depends on what the app is. I mean, for some of the things, I think it is still pretty natural to like reach out and touch it and all that. From multitasking with floating windows to immersive gaming, the Orion offers a glimpse into the whole new way of interacting with the digital world. And it's not just about solo experiences. So both people walk up to this QR code in the middle of the room, stare at it for a few seconds, and then that becomes the anchor point for a shared experience in 3D space, which in this case was a game of 3D Pong. So with the sensors at the front, now it's just shifted to visually tracking my hand through the air and mapping that to a paddle, and it let me hit this ball back and forth. You can imagine sort of in the future, we'd be having a version of this conversation where, you know, maybe I or, or you are not even here. It's like one of us is physically here and the other one is here as, a, as kind of a full body hologram. And it's not just a video call, you can actually interact, you can do things. I mean, in the, the demo, we had the, you know, ping pong and games and things like that. But I mean, you could, you can interact, you can work together, you can, you know, play poker, play chess, whatever, like the holographic cards, holographic board game. Shared AR experiences open up a world of possibilities from collaborative work to interactive entertainment. But how does the Orion fit into the current landscape of wearable tech? High tech glasses. They've been the stuff of nerd dreams. That is, until this year. Meta's Ray-Bans, I wore them almost every day. Apple's Vision Pro, I wore it for, well, at least a day. And Meta's Orion Prototype, I tried it for long enough to see the future. VR headsets are over here, smart glasses are over here, and they're both racing towards this Goldilocks zone in the center somewhere, which would be AR glasses. Like virtual reality headsets are incredible. They have tons of tech, amazing immersion, super wide field of view, but also they're absolutely massive and you don't really just go walking around in public with them. At least most people don't want to. But then smart glasses are the exact opposite. They look like something you might just wear out in regular everyday life, but they can't really fit that much tech in them. So you're limited to maybe a camera and some batteries and speakers and a little computer inside. That's about it. So VR headsets wanna shrink down more and more until they can compact all the tech and actually look like regular glasses, while smart glasses wanna add more and more tech as much as they can to be better while still looking like regular glasses. And so somewhere in the middle is this fantasy product called augmented reality glasses. You want this to replace the phone, so the things that people are doing on the phone, or at least you know the media and the type yep. of interactions. Uh, but it's also AR can do more than what That's a right. phone can do. So uh, in the meantime, AI has come up, and we always thought it would be holograms first, and AI would be later. Um, and we we have the holograms, but AI is coming up fast. And so I think a lot of the use cases that we'll use with this actually will be querying the world around you. Mm. Um, you know, querying uh, your own day, your own past. Where did I leave my keys? Without having to separately do anything to remind it to, to remember where your keys were. It just has you know, the ability to keep track of these things by virtue of, of processing what's going on as you go about the day. Um, and so that probably is, for me, the phone use cases combined with an AI that, unlike your phone, has full context on what you've been seeing and hearing. Orion clearly aims for a different niche than existing VR headsets, pushing towards that holy grail, the true AR glasses. But with all this advanced tech, what's the cost? The catch, each Orion prototype costs about $10,000 to make. And Meta's only making about 1,000 of them for internal development. Right, this is very much sort of Gen 1. They are not selling this version. I've heard that if they were going to sell this thing, it would be absurdly expensive. You know, not only are we gonna be able to do this, but I think we're gonna be able to get it cheaper and higher quality and even, even smaller and more stylish over time. So I think this is gonna be a pretty wild future. So the Meta Orion glasses in its current form are very much a prototype, a very expensive prototype. It's a statement piece, a tech showcase, not something that you'll be buying anytime soon. 
What are the key takeaways? This is the culmination of 10 years of research and, and development that we've done to basically miniaturize all the computing that you need to have glasses, not a headset, but glasses that can put full holograms into the world with a wide field of view. What's important for us is this is a fully working, it's got, it's got an operating system, it's, it's live, uh, it's internet connected, and we now have a device that allows us to develop software um, and develop an intuition around what software experiences will be great hmm. for what we believe is the type of device that will replace the phone someday. Meta's Orion is a glimpse into a truly ambitious future, a future where digital information seamlessly blends with physical reality. While it's not a product you can buy today, the sheer innovation packed into these classes from the holographic displays to the neural wristband is undeniably impressive. The high price tag and early stage software make it clear that it's a work in progress, showing just how far we have to go. But it's a first step for Meta to make AR as commonplace as smartphone and shows the potential this tech could have in the future. That's it for the ultimate roundup review of the Meta Orion glasses. Find full videos down below and subscribe for more re-reviews where we watch all the reviews so you don't have to.